so I don't want to be too loud because our little one's sleeping. But these are my clay walls that we did um, uh, almost a year ago. And uh, it's just red clay. Um, dug it up out the yard, mixed it with uh, playground sand and water, and you just, what I did was took a test board, actually I took some test drywall, and uh, painted it on there until I got a thickness and consistency that I really liked. But what I'm going to do today is, normally when you'd want to seal this red clay wall, you would take and use a oil, uh, like the floor I used tongue oil, um, or a linseed oil, or an oil type product but instead of oil this time I'm going to be using the shellac um, shellac is not a 100% natural product um, you can make it supernatural um, by making it and mixing it yourself but it predominantly just consists of there's ingredients there but it's just uh, couple different types of solvents and then a resin that's actually made by a bug which is the shellac resin but anyways I'm gonna try that on the wall I've used it on um, the doors so these were doors that were in the house they were already sanded to this point when we purchased the house and they have um, this had lead paint on it and so we needed an encasement but I didn't want to just use like a a super shiny, shiny poly and the oil wouldn't work as an encasement so I needed something to actually seal around it and so we have lead testers and we tested it before and after and uh, it does a really good job of encasing the lead it is a little bit shiny but it doesn't look like a super fake it just looks kind of wet so I'm gonna try that on this wall and um, you guys don't have to watch me paint. I'm going to put down a little coat. And um, all I'm going to use is on the doors, I just used a mini roller or one of the micro rollers like this. And this is actually an old dirty one um, for this project. It won't matter. But, uh, and I dipped it straight in the bucket. And I did the doors outside. In here, I'm probably going to, um, I'm going to put down the trash bag and tape it off just so I don't get any major runs. But the reason I'm doing it is we've got this shelf overhead, this place here. I'm going to turn it to a bookshelf. Okay. Um, that's just going to be a general purpose shelf. And I'm not worried about that as much as I just don't want my books getting all covered with red clay. For the most part, it doesn't come off. Um, it stays on the wall really well. But if it was something, a high use area, like I'm probably going to put my helmets up here too. Um, so. That's my cedar closet, quite proud of that. Um, so, One of the things we wanted to do with the products we use in the house were things that weren't gonna release large volumes of VOCs or any additional type of impurities into the air. Indoor air quality was really important to us. So we made this on paint. Another room's got uh, lime wash, old school lime wash on it. So if, you haven't, if you're interested in that, we got a video on that. We did milk paint in some of the other rooms. This wall is milk paint, um, so that's a kind of a weird product that works really well. So, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment. I'm gonna get this up. Shellac dries super fast. That's another reason I'm using this over oil, is because it dries really quickly. The first coat may take a little while longer, but the next two, three coats, which I'll probably only do one or two on here, um, but the next, the second or third coat, just I mean, it's 10, 15 minutes, dry, ready to go. So enough blabbing i'm gonna go and do it let you look at it when it gets done all right so i got this much done you can see it darkened up a lot um, looks like i got a bit of a run there i'm not done yet but it got a lot darker um where the, you know, that's just the matte basic finish i decided i'm gonna do this at this edge too but the solvent smell is a lot stronger inside than it was using it outside but I'm really amazed at how well the clay, this is only a single coat of clay. All right, we didn't go back in and put multiple coats of paint on the wall. And it was actually done by little kids. I've got some pictures, maybe I'll throw them at the end. But um, I'm really impressed at how well this is doing. Uh, I was scared that the roller was just gonna take the, the clay right off the wall, but it's even maintaining the texture from our brush strokes. We used a mason, a mason br brush to try to have some texture in the wall. So, all right, I'm gonna finish this up. Well, I quite 
I quite like the way that turned out. Um, if you look up there, you see it still. I just did the space where the books are going. There's a lot more mat around the rest of the room, so it might look odd, and I may have to do something different. Finish out the rest of the room with shellac or something in the future, but um, it's, it's still wet, so some of the shininess is going to dull down. And technically, you can sand shellac, so if I don't like the shininess, or if it's too shiny, you can actually take a, a high grit sandpaper and sand it down a little bit. So, um, it, the good thing, to, a good thing to do would be to do multiple coats, and then you would get, you know, almost an enamel. But the primary function of this was just to keep the dust and the clay, the loose particles, from coming off and getting all over books. So, I'm just gonna do the one coat. Um, I like it. It kind of reminds me of. Uh, leather it looks a lot rougher on camera than it does in real life but I'm gonna get some fresh air because those solvents do uh, smell a little strong and let this dry and, and maybe look at it one more time this is not how I did it originally but I had to do some touch up touch ups around the room and you can't tell but I did some touch ups around the edge there and for my touch ups I just took and this has been sitting out since yesterday so it's a little goopy but just red clay out the yard mixed with a little bit of water and i just mixed it up with this brush did some excellent touch-ups and um but the way i originally mixed it i think i've got a video on it i actually took and mixed the put the clay into a bucket with water and uh, mixed it up really really well with a drill and a paint mixer and then i'll let it settle and i just got the clay layer out which is why the coloration is a little bit different but you can't really tell once it dries so oh yeah back to getting fresh air that's what i was doing well it's been about 15 20 minutes and uh i'll dry to the touch for consistency's sake i really should put another coat on here and if this was a surface that was going to like have contact or people would be rubbing on it or something it might be worth another coat but just for uh the purposes of what i want and I, because I don't want it super shiny, um, I'm just going to be done with this one coat. So that's how you can shellac over your uh, clay walls. But if you have any kind of older walls or, you know, something that has a real good aesthetic to it and you just don't want to ruin it with by painting over it or um, putting a really thick coat of poly on it, the, the shellac works really, really well for that. So good product. Um, like I said, the... Uh, the solvents in it they they're really strong but they're it's fine in here now and uh they they evaporate really really quick so i just opened a window and so now time to cut some boards and build a shelf but i'll probably wrap this one up here thank y'all for watching click subscribe if you ran across this randomly that's the shelf not quite done and definitely doesn't look level in the camera but it was level with a level so there's a million ways I could have done this, but the easiest way was just to put up some cleat cleats here. Those are cedar. Um, everything else on this this part is some leftover oak that a buddy gave me. This is some leftover oak that a buddy gave me. Um, it wasn't properly dried, and oak is really bad about warping, particularly like the you know, that thick piece isn't going to warp too or cup too bad. It shouldn't. These pieces aren't fully dry, so they're liable to cup or something like that. So I just have them brad nailed or um, finish nailed down. And so I may have to do something different with those at some point, but as long as they hold my books, I really don't care. Um, I ran out of this oak, so I'm gonna do something different down here at the bottom. But I already plan on doing something slightly different, but I've also thought about taking this one out because it's almost the perfect height for a desk. So I was thinking about actually taking that part out and turning this into a little miniature desk. Um, so I'm not really sure, and then, but then that would mess up my shelf. So I'm gonna get most of my books out and see if this is enough room to handle it, or if I need to build some more, or or what. But this board was slightly warped a little, not warped, but it's just out a little bit, out of square. So I did have to take a screw and run a screw into this shelf to pull it back into square a little bit. Um, but that made this one a little bit tight so i did get a little bit of an injury there so i could fix that with just a little bit of red clay touch up or probably just not going to worry about it 
and I've got to wire up my light switch and I haven't figured if I'm just gonna put a book in here to keep it away from the light switch or if I'm actually gonna take I got a lot of extra wire in that box and I actually kind of block out a little switch so it could be on this face so who knows but that's what the uh, the clay shellac over clay turns out like so all right hope you enjoyed this video This was the painting of the walls, the um, finished drywall, red clay in a bucket, and little kids and paintbrushes. So, it was a pretty darn good time. Be sure to subscribe.